Hi, hello, welcome. Excuse the funny dog avatar. I, I just, I got it. I gotta use it at all times. Uh, this is a tutorial on converting hair from other sources. So say you have a source mesh from like a game. From this, we're gonna be using M's festival outfit from Pokemon Masters because that's what I do. I'm the Pokemon guy. And we're going to convert his hair and later his outfit to The Sims 4. Now, uh, you're gonna need a few programs for this. You're going to need Blender 2.79. Uh, you need to note that specific version. I'll have it linked below since Blender kind of makes uh, older versions hard to find. You'll also need Sims 4 Studio, which is just a general Sims 4 CC program. It's kind of needed for everything, so if you don't download it, you'll, you'll kind of be lost. You'll also need Clip Studio Paint, Photoshop, Paint Tool Sci, Metabang, PhotoP, anything that- uh, any image editing program that has layers. There's like half of those ones I listed are paid, but PhotoP, my beloved, is online and free. So if you're cheap, like me, use PhotoP, it's wonderful. So we're gonna get started here by shrinking me down. Get that's not that's that's Sims 4 Studio. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm lost in my OBS layers here. Shrink me down, put me over here. Let's open Sims 4 Studio. Let's go create a 3D mesh, and we're going to find a mesh that is close to what we want. So N's festival outfit is one swatch, since it, he has one hair color, at least I, last time I checked, and it's in kind of a ponytail, so we'll use this green ponytail for the mask frame for it. So it'll tell you to select next. It's going to ask you to save it somewhere. We're saving the package, so you just want to save it somewhere where you will know where it is. I have a master's folder. You obviously can't see any of this happening because it's OBS is not showing it. So, and if you make a lot of CC, some, most people mark their CC with a thing. Mine is SDM for SDM Sims, uh, but it's very helpful for when people download stuff and they want to find it. So let's just name it. Name it Summer and Hair. And it will export your wonderful mesh package. So you'll see this. You want to navigate to the me meshes category. Also, I should clarify um, real quick. This is for Windows. <laughs> because I know the layout for... Um, I know the layout for Sims 4 Studio is a lot different on Mac. I tried doing support for someone who did it on Mac and I was very lost. So now that you're here, you're going to export the mesh, and now this is, oh, uh, okay, there we go, now it's loading. Now this is where you want to go to your folder, not in your mods folder, do not save any blend files in your mods folder, do not save any texture files in your mods folder, it will be a disaster. So I have a separate folder in my just sims modding folder, and I have the summer n number 89, and I'm just going to save this as hair mesh and it'll take us time. See, that's why I have the dog so I can bounce around. It's wonderful. Uh, depending on the mesh and depending on your computer, it can take a while, so there we go. Let's double click it to open Blender, and I'm gonna have to call OBS to open Blender. Uh, beep, 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 beep. Come on, Blender. There we go. And I'm gonna shrink myself down again, so y'all can actually see what I'm doing. Wow, wow. There we go, I'm small now. So here when Blender, first thing I'm going to do is, or first thing I'm actually going to do is go to screencast keys and enable them and make them really big. So now, there we go. You can see the numbers I'm pressing. So first thing I'm going to do is press 5 so I can see, it's just, I like ortho better. Uh, so your basic controls are middle mouse button, rotate, shift, and middle mouse button is move it around. The that's 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 right, right? <laughs> this mouse button is move things around, and then this one is select. So I think it is. I don't know Blender. I say as I've been using Blender for years. So we're just gonna hide all this. Make sure you take note of the cuts and which ones are correct. So this one is the full hair. We'll just take note of that. Now we're going to import our mesh. So it depends on what type your mesh is. There's a bunch of import options. Mine is a Miku Miku dance file. So we're just gonna throw N in here. Yay, there he is. Um, 
So if your model has bones, you have to get rid of them, which sounds sinister. So we're just going to get rid of the bones. You right click to select your bones, press X, they're gone. And if there's any other things like see this end summer 2022, right click it, delete, it's gone. So now you have a mesh, and depending on where your mesh is from, it may or may not be huge. So we just want N's hair right now, so we are going to peel it from him. So you can see all this garbage over here, we'll get to that later. Um, go to your model. Now depending on how your model is structured, it may or may not, it hopefully will. Most game model rips do, but some don't if they're from like an old game. Uh, go to this little buddy, Materials, and you'll see it has things separated into materials. So for N, luckily his hair is separated, so just click select if it's separated, and oh, his hairband is there. So there might be pieces that you want that don't select, that's okay. If there's something that you can reasonably select, select this little buddy down here, press C, and wow, it'll all select. Now press, I think, I think it's P, yes, P. Separate selection by material. There we go. Right click and delete the body. Now we just have his hair. He has been peeled. So you'll see it's super huge. To make it small, we go Shift Alt Control C, which is very similar to the Sims 4 uh, cheat command. That's how I remember it. And we go Geometry to Origin. Now the camera is going to be a little bit weird, so we just go View Selected and make this really small, go view selected again, there is a hotkey for it, but who cares. So if your mesh had bones, yes, I need to remember this or else it's going to cause me to crash later. If your mesh has bones, you need to delete all of them. So go here, delete, what? delete all groups, and then go to armature modifiers, there'll be this armature modifier, get rid of it. You're also going to want to go to UV maps and change this thing, whatever, it might be called a UV map, it might be called something else, change it to UV-0. So now that we've done that, hold on, I'm actually recording, right? Okay, thank god, we're having those late night doubts here. Oh man, my voice is already starting to burn out, sorry about that. Um, now we go here, and we just start positioning it into place. Now, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. You may want to enable- okay, back face filling is already enabled. That's nice. Thank you, Blender. I was going to enable ambient occlusion just so I can see things better. And we're just going to use the transform tools to fit it into place. Now, if you'll see, there's a couple of areas back there where I can see through. Hold on, I got a cough. I'm gonna cut this out. Okay, you didn't hear anything because I cut that out. <laughs> but we are going to just... Now, if you'll notice, sometimes you may have mesh that when you move it, it does this. That's because it has doubles. It usually happens a lot with anime mesh or just any ripped mesh, I've noticed. So you're wanna go, gonna wanna go to mesh, go to clean up, and then remove doubles, and it's gonna make your life whole easier. And it's gonna make it have so many less vertices. Look at that, 2,586 vertices, all gone. So it might look a little funky with the shading now, but we'll fix it later. So, but you're still going to notice, hey, it only moves this one vertice. Well, we're going to fix that as well. Just press your trusty O key. And now, okay, well, it doesn't really show. So press O, select a vertice. And when you move it, scroll the mouse wheel up or down, and it will sort of affect how much pressure the area gives. So I'm just gonna, this should be a quick fitting job. Uh, and please cooperate. Uh, this is gonna be lazy and I'm still gonna release it. Oh well. <laughs> I'm not paying walling my stuff so you don't get quality. <laughs> That's my joke. I'm joking. Please don't pay wall things. Uh, especially conversions. It makes me very sad. So I'm going to move it up just so it doesn't look like he is having snot coming out of his nose because that's one of what my personal end hair has a problem with. Okay, so we got ends hair. So now while we're in edit mode, you see this. We are going to go to our image editor of choice, which for me is Clip Studio Paint, which isn't really an image editor. Well, I guess it is. It's kind of like Photoshop, but also it doesn't suck. So we're going to just find our image, our funny image, open Clip Studio Paint, which is killed by Blender and Sims 4 Studio, 
and you'll see I have- I need to make myself bigger, hold on. <laughs> you'll see I have this cool little thing, I guess. This is called a UV map. And The Sims 4 has one UV map for every sim, and it's really annoying, and I don't like it. I wish we could use multiple UV maps, but we can't. So, as you'll see, everywhere has its place. See, the magenta square is the hair, the big yellow thing is the face. We don't have to worry about anything or about UV placement because this is just hair. So, we are going... Uh, we're going to go to hair, and we're just going to control V in our funny little... Our funny little hair and since i can see that the only part where ends hair is is the green bits i'm just gonna do this and then delete outside the selection i'm not sure if your program may have that and then i'm going to resize this to fit in the hair section and then i'm gonna just hide these and i'm going to save this as and i have to navigate to the folder again so I'm just going to save it as, you can save things as PNG or DDS. Uh, DDS, if you meet, bleh. DDS means you don't have to do the compression yourself. PNG, it'll auto compress it, which may look really bad. So I'm just going to save this as hair text.png and it'll save that. So now we're going to go back to Blender, which is going to cover up the CSP. So I'm going, just to make this easier for myself, I'm going to enable textured solid so I can see that this is textured. We're going to press A to select all. Then we are going to open up. Oh, we're going to go to image, open image, and then find our texture. Now it's going to look weird because our texture is not fitted. So we need to fit our texture now. So press A and then you can use the S key to move it big or small, SX to move it like this, or SY to move it like this, and then G to move it around. H hides it, and I often press H a lot accidentally. You can just control Z to unhide it. Don't, don't uh, tell anyone I don't actually know what the command for unhiding things is. Um, I am a professional. So we're just going to carefully position this. It can take time. I usually don't take time even though I should. Because again, um, we're, we only professional conversions here at sdmsims.tumblr.com. So it looks, it looks okay. It, you couldn't tell if I didn't cheese it. So it looks okay. So now we are going to rig it. Yay! Hold on. It's my funny little dog. My funny little dog is taking up half the screen. Get out of here. Get out of here, funny little dog. Get out of here. So now we are going to unhide the full hair as we saw earlier. So for this hair, it is Sims 4 Studio Mesh 2. And we are going to select Sims 4 Studio Mesh whatever, which one has the full hair. We're going to shift click the hair. We're going to go to weight paint, transfer weights. It's kind of scrungled. We're going to go to source by name. And then this is very important or else your mesh will explode in game. And I'm like, why is my mesh exploding? And then I realize I forget to do this. You go clean and then all groups. So now it should be weight painted. You can go here, you'll see these weights. You can go to head and you'll see his head is weighted. You can go to spine, you'll see it's weighted there. Um, you can edit the weight paints if you're a stickler for quality, I'm not. <laughs> So, so now that we've done that, we want to go to Sims 4 Studio Mesh 2, or whichever hat shop is the one that is the base hair, and we're going to control A it, select X, vertices, just obliterate it all. Uh, we're going to shift, not shift click, we're going to click the base hair that we want to convert, shift click the Sims 4 Studio Mesh, and do control J. And see the shading's fixed now, isn't it wonderful? So, that's cool. But how do we make hat chops? First, let's save this. So, for hat chops, uh, I used to not do them, but then I did them because most video game hair is cut pretty smoothly. So, as you can see, let's uh, do this one first. It seems like it'll be easier. So, this one is just a straight line it day. So, if we go here, let's press Control c on here, and then Control v it. You'll see it'll make these bone-bone shapes and rig zero. You want to delete those. Get, get him out of here. So let's hide this. 
So you'll see it goes from, let's plus three to just do a side view, it goes from here to here. And we'll see it should be cut pretty evenly because it's a video game here, it's optimized, it's, I mean it's semi-optimized I guess. Uh, so if, how you do this is you go control alt select face, turn on this so you can see everything. Press C, I know some people prefer to press B. I like using the circle tool because it's like I'm drawing on it. Uh, we're going to select all this and then once we're done selecting all this we're going to press X and delete faces. So now we have a pretty clean cut of N's hair. We can just delete some more triangles here if we want. And go back to vertex, re-enable your O tool so you can, and just make the x-ray not visible because it makes things easier. And then you can fit it to, whoop, you can fit it to the hat chop a bit closer since the hair kind of gets compacted when it gets chopped by a hat. Now, my hat chops are kind of lazy and not perfect. I know, again, some people spend more time on it and it will look better. But for me, we're doing a quick tutorial. Uh, if it explodes, it explodes. So, there we go. This is, it's an imperfect hat chop, but, okay, that could be better. Hold on. Okay, there we go. So I spent a bit more time cleaning that up. Again, it's not perfect, but it works. So sometimes, depending on the hair, you can use one hat chop as the basis for another hat chop. So just because this is a tutorial, we're going to control. Oh, right, right. Uh, we need to actually merge it first. So do the same thing you did with the base hair. You go to the base mesh, you go to edit mode, control A, or if it's already all selected you don't have to do that, press X and do faces, vertices, whatever. Then you press that, shift click that, control J, there you go. So then we'll copy this so we can just modify it to be the other hair, which is Sims Force Studio Mesh 1, delete this, and the rig 001, and then we're just going to edit this real quick. Okay, there we go. So again, it's not perfect, but it works. And also, he doesn't really wear a hat in this form, so... And we're gonna do the same thing. Go to Sims 4 Studio Mesh 1, which is that hat chop. Press X, get rid of it, and then merge them. So, now that we've got all that, we want to unhide all the hat chops. And we're gonna save this as hair mesh. Then we are going to go back to Sims 4 Studio. Whoop. Sims 4 Studio. There you are! I'm gonna make myself big again because I feel like it. And then we are going to import mesh. So I'm not doing not doing uh, poly groups. I'm not doing LUDs. Yes, that's what I meant to say. I'm not doing LUDs for this because as you can see it's only like 1050 polys, which is super low. And I'm lazy, so I don't feel like I need to do them. If your hair is more than like 1,000 polygons, please, please, please do LUDs. Please. If your hair is like 10,000 polygons and you don't do LUDs, I am looking at you. That has been my PSA. So, uh, again, this is a tutorial. I'm lazy. It's already low poly. Uh, we're just gonna throw it in there. So, if you did this without error, it should import fine. Usually the biggest error for when it doesn't import is it, uh, you didn't unhide all the hair meshes, so cool. We got all our hairs. Let's go to the texture now. So we're going to import the texture we prepared earlier, and as you can see, it's his hair. So we're gonna quickly go over the categories because it pisses people off when you don't categorize your mesh properly. So colors, you don't have to touch because it's a hair. Age appropriateness, you don't have to touch. Fashion choice is masculine. Um, occult, don't touch this. Uh, this, don't touch this for hair. Hair length, uh, touch this. To do it depending on your hair. It is, uh, I'd say it's straight. And then I like to turn off restrict opposite frames so people, if they want to trans their sims gender, uh, like, they can do that because that's epic. But, and then always turn off allow for random or people will get very mad at you. <laughs> or at least they won't get mad at you, but they'll get mad at the sim wearing your CC that they randomly, randomly generated wearing. So cool. This is done. We're going to save it. 
and I will meet you in The Sims. I'm going to stop recording real quick just in case this thing melts my PC. Hi, okay, so we are here with our wonderful uh, randomly generated sim and my beautiful white cast background that is like a void. So now that you're in gas, we're just going to want to go to the hair and check out how it looks in game. And we're going to have to scroll through my sea of CC that, oh god, I should have thought about this earlier. I should have made a folder. So depending on what CC you use to base off your mesh, it will depend where your thing shows up. Oh, is this it? This is it. So some things may not look as good in game. Uh, some people like the cartoony look. You can see there is a few gaps there because I didn't do a great job fitting it because I was just kind of like YOLO swag, whatever. But it is a hair. And if we mess with the lock style, we can see it morphs to the back movement just a little bit. So the hair, it's in the game. It probably works with hats, but it probably doesn't. So yeah, if I move the eyebrows up, it kind of makes it less egregious. But again, spend more time on it and it won't look as bad. Um, but yeah, that's how you do it. It's a lot. So, okay, yeah, that doesn't work. I need to fix this later. I probably won't fix it later because I'm lazy. <laughs> um, but that's how you do it. See, that looks less, eh, maybe. <laughs> that's how you do hair. You convert the thing to the thing. Uh... Yeah, I don't know how to close this off with, other than, uh, okay, get out of here, get out of here, Zinsmore Studio, get out of here. I don't know how to close this off, other than it's a lot easier than people think. You just throw the thing in the thing and do the thing. Bingo bongo. Uh, I will have a tutorial on full body outfits soon, and then a tutorial on full body outfits for pets. And then maybe a tutorial on build by objects because I've gotten multiple requests for those even though I hate doing build by objects. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you maybe learned a thing and that you didn't lose your mind listening to me ramble. I will go in my pit now. Goodbye. I imagine there's an explosion effect when I leave. Okay.